Are you looking at filters for your camera lens and can't figure out if you need a circular or a linear polarizer? I'll help you out on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. Don't forget to go to askdavidbergman.com. Ask your photo question right there on that site. I just might pick it to answer here on a future show. Today, I've got a question that was sent in from Adam R. And he wants to know, I'm interested in purchasing a polarized filter and have noticed there are two different types. What is the difference between linear and circular polarizers and how do they affect the final image? That's a great question, Adam, and thanks so much for sending it in. Now, if you're a regular watcher of this show, you probably know what I'm gonna do next. Before I answer that specific question, I'm gonna talk about polarizing filters in general and why you might choose to use one. So here's the thing, nearly everything we see in the world is being hit by light and then that light is reflected. In the real world, light is bouncing around in practically every single direction at all times because it reflects off of nearly every single surface. Even particles in the air actually change the direction of light waves. Well, big deal, right? Well, it turns out that the angle of those reflections can change the way some things look. A simple example is when you see a reflection off of glass or maybe glare off the surface of water. Depending on the specific angle, the same thing can look very, very different. Another example is if you look at the sky when the sun is behind your back. In that case, the sky will usually look very blue right in front of you. That's mostly polarized light. But turn yourself 90 degrees with the sun at your side, that blue color can get washed out and look less saturated. That's a lot more unpolarized light. Now, it really all has to do with how light travels. And look, I am not gonna go too deep down that rabbit hole. I'm not an engineer and won't pretend to understand it all. But what I will do is tell you how we can use it photographically. A polarizing filter is like most other filters in that you just buy the filter and then you screw it on the front of your lens. What it does is block some of that crazy unpolarized light so you see more of the cleaner polarized light in your photos but it also allows you to spin the front part of it. You can actually turn this lens and spin it all the way around. That's so you can pick which light waves you wanna filter out and which you wanna let through. Now back to that 90 degree sunlight sky example, you can turn that filter and eventually it should darken the sky just a bit and bring out more of the blue color. If you do a lot of daytime landscape photography, it can actually be quite useful. I personally don't shoot much of that, so I wouldn't necessarily buy a polarizing filter just to add some contrast and saturation to an occasional image. I can do that really easily when I tone my pictures in the computer. However, a more dramatic use and something that you absolutely can't do in the computer without an awful lot of painstaking work has to do with reflections and glare. Earlier today, I went outside near Central Park to show the dramatic difference that a polarizing filter can make. Take a look at this video of a random building in the neighborhood. In most of the windows, you can see a reflection of another building across the street. But when I turn that polarizing filter on the front of my lens, changing the angle of the light that's being polarized, look at what happens. Most of those reflections go away just like magic. Now you can actually see through the glass just what you'd expect when you look through clear glass. Here are still pictures of the before and the after. Now here's another example that might be more practical. I went inside Central Park and was photographing at the lake. I shot video again so you can see what happens in real time. This is exactly how my eyes saw the scene. When I pan down, I can see some movement in the water, but it's really not very clear because of the reflection of the sky off the surface of the lake. When I turn the polarizing filter, it reveals a turtle as clear as can be. Here's one more shot where I can only see what looks like a rock sticking up out of the water but turn that polarizer and you can see my little turtle friend swimming around without a care in the world. Now in very general terms, a polarizing filter will make things more clear. You might already have polarized sunglasses to reduce glare when driving on a bright sunny day. So it really depends what you're shooting and the look you're going for. But a polarizing filter is just one of those things that you should keep in your camera bag just for the situations when you might need it. Now onto Adam's question. Yes, there are two different types of polarizing filter that you can buy, circular and linear. It's a little confusing because some people think circular means you can spin it in a circle and linear means you can't, but you can actually spin both types. What it does, it really refers to the type of polarization that's happening through the filter. One gives you linearly polarized light and the other gives you circularly polarized light. I'm sure you can guess which is which. A linear polarizer is a simple polarizing filter that works just fine and does exactly what it's supposed to do. However, 
As technology has changed, it began to cause some problems. First, it was in the movie industry. 35 millimeter movie film cameras often use what's called a video tap. They attach a beam splitter to the viewfinder and that allows them to get a video signal out so they can monitor or record video as it's also being shot to film. Now, as I understand it, the beam splitter works by using a mirror to redirect some of the light and just doesn't work with linearly polarized light. Using a linear filter can cause the signal going through that video tap to just go dark. So no more video tap, absolutely not a good thing. Now today in some modern DSLR cameras, light is redirected in the body for both metering and autofocus. On at least some Canon DSLRs, I'm not sure about all, the autofocus system is perpendicular to the sensor. It's actually way up here at the top. The sensor is in the back and the autofocus system is right in the viewfinder, right in there, and it's completely perpendicular to the sensor. Now, light is redirected and bounced around to get where it's supposed to go inside the body. And the thing is, kind of like the video tap, linearly polarized light can mess with the camera's metering and autofocus systems. Also, not a good thing. So they're just not reliable when you're using a linear polarizer. So to counteract that, someone very smart created a new type of filter that uses a regular linear polarizer, but then adds another layer that has what's called a quarter wave plate. What that does is turn the linearly polarized light coming through the filter into circularly polarized light. Now here's the thing, the two labels look very similar, the two filters look very similar. If they're not labeled, you can actually tell which is which because a linear polarizer will work the same way whether you use it flipped around or not. On a circular polarizer, the second layer, that quarter wave plate, always has to be closer to the camera with the linear polarizing layer on the outside facing out. So if you flip it around, it simply won't work. Obviously, it's not an issue with a screw-on filter since you can only put it on in one direction, but just something to know. Now again, you're welcome to Google the science on all this and can geek out all you want. But the bottom line is that circularly polarized light works just fine always with those DSLR autofocus and metering systems. Now in the real world, it doesn't really seem to be a huge problem. I tried a linear polarizer on my Canon 1DX Mark III and couldn't tell any difference between that and a circular polarizer. But really, why chance it? They're both relatively affordable. This Tiffin linear filter is about 15 bucks and the circular version is 25. You know you'll be safe with the circular polarizer no matter what camera you use, so that's what I would stick with. Now having said that, mirrorless cameras are a different beast. Metering and autofocus work right off the sensor so the light doesn't have to be bounced around to different places inside the body. A linear polarizer will actually work just fine with those. So if you only shoot mirrorless cameras, and that includes point and shoots of course, then save the 10 bucks and go for the linear. Like any filter, just make sure you get the right size for the front of your lens. So Adam, I'm not sure what kind of camera you're shooting, but I hope that helps you make your decision on which one to buy. Have you all used polarizing filters? Which one do you use and how do you use them? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, I'd appreciate you tapping that like button and also subscribe to the Adorama TV YouTube channel if you haven't already. I'll be back here next Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern with a brand new question that maybe one of you will send in. Hope to see you next time right here on Ask David Bergman.